Hey everyone and welcome to the uh, first video for my Pi Game basic tutorial. Um, in this tutorial I'm going to kind of go over how to use uh, Pi Game and the basics of it. Uh, we're going to be making a game that's, I'm probably just going to do something basic like a space shooter. Uh, think of Galaga where you'll have a little spaceship at the bottom. Some enemies come down, you can shoot. There will be like a, a score at the top. You'll have some lives. Uh, if you get hit, you'll die, lose a life, um, and there'll be like a game over screen. Something really basic, uh, just to kind of get your feet wet with Pi Game. Um, and I'll kind of show you the Pi Game documentation website, which is uh, where you can go if you're ever confused about anything in Pi Game and look up how to do something. Um, in this first video, what we're probably gonna do is we'll get the we'll get it to create a window on the screen, and we may we'll probably have enough time to kind of create the main game loop as well. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to install Pygame. If you're using PyCharm, uh, it should automatically create a Python virtual environment folder right here. Um, and you can click in there and right click on the scripts folder and go to open in terminal and this will open a, a command line window down here in the scripts folder and all you got to do is type in pip install pygame that's all you have to do now if you're not using um, if you're not using pycharm and when you installed python you click that box at the bottom that said install python to path you can actually just go to command prompt on your computer and type in pip. You can be you can be in any folder. It doesn't matter where. But you can type in pip install pi game and hit enter, and it'll actually install it on your computer. And all your projects can use it. Uh, I just choose to use the virtual environment method, where it just installs it only for this project that I'm working in. But uh, if you're if you're having any issues at all, just open command prompt, type in pip install pi game and hit enter, and it should work and install it on your computer. And all your projects can use it just fine. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new Python file, and I'm going to call it main, just because that's the, the main file that kind of launches the game. That's kind of the uh, standard, uh, just name it main.py. You can name it whatever, but I choose to name it main. And the first thing I'm going to do to make a display, uh, we have to import Pygame. So we're going to type in import Pygame. And I'm actually not sure if you guys can see this, so let me change let me change the font size real quick. I think it's in here. That should be under editor font 20 25. Yeah, that's that should be good. Apply. All right. All right, so we're going to import Pygame and in Pygame the way you would make a display we're going to make a display object and the method is called it's in the pi game module it's in the display sub module and the method is called set mode and this is the method that makes a display and it takes uh, one argument and that is a tuple that contains the width of the display and the height so we'll just make it 640 by 480 and this should make our display. So let's go ahead and run this and you'll probably see a display pop up. And you did, it popped up there in the top left, but if you notice it just kind of disappeared. And that's because it imported Pygame, it ran the it created a display object, but then the program closed out. So we obviously need something to keep looping so the display will actually stay on the screen. Uh, so what I'll do for that we're gonna make a I'm gonna make a variable called running and this is gonna be like hey is the game currently running well yes it is so we're gonna say while running while the game is currently running uh, pi game dot uh, sorry yeah pi game dot display dot update and this pi game dot display dot update just says hey keep updating the display uh, so we'll go ahead and run that and you'll see uh, the window does stay up here now, but if you notice, it says not responding, uh, and it crashes. Um, the reason that is, is because in order, and I'm pretty sure all programs on Windows kind of work like this, but in order for a program to res like be responsive and, and not say not responding, 
there's something in the program that has to keep kind of asking the operating system to like pull events. It has to like pull an event list so the operating system still knows, hey, this program's running or it's it's still working. It is responding. Um, so the first thing you want to do in your loop is actually there's a uh, there's an event list that we need to pull within Pygame. Or actually, I'll just type the code here and I'll explain what it does. So we're gonna do for event in pygame.event.get if event.type equals pygame.quit. All right, so there's a method inside the pygame event module called get, and this returns a list of every event that you can do on your computer, like if you move your mouse, if you press a button on the keyboard, if you hit the escape key, uh, everything. Um, so we have to keep uh, pulling all these events every frame of our game so that the program doesn't crash and for other reasons too because we obviously want to know what the player is pressing on the keyboard but if you don't have this uh, event polar in here th the game will go into not responding and it'll crash um, and the if statement we have inside that for loop says if the type of event equals pygame.quit and this all caps quit right here uh, that says if the X, this, this quit event um, is the X button at the top right of the window. So if they click the X button, then it just runs pygame.quit and quit. And pygame.quit just closes out of pygame and cleans everything up. And quit just closes out of Python. So now if we run it, now the window is responsive. We don't get the little loading bar and it, it doesn't say not responding. And uh, all you have to do is click the X and it should close the window out. Um, so the other thing um, you probably haven't noticed, but <clears throat> we want our game to run at 60 frames per second. And right now, which would mean this loop that we have right here, this while loop, we want this to run through 60 times per second. So we have like a smooth 60 FPS on the game. Right now it's just running as fast as possible and it's probably running at like two or 300 FPS, which we don't want that because then your physics will look all jacked up on the screen um, and things will move super fast. So we want to lock it at 60. Uh, the way you would do that, we'll make a, a variable called FPS and we'll say it equals 60. And we need, uh, Pygame comes with a, a object called a clock object. And that's what helps us control the frame rate of our game. So we can do clock, and it's within the Pygames time submodule, and it's just a clock class. So now we have a clock object, and it's really simple. The way you lock your loop at 60 FPS, you just access the clock object, and it has a method called tick, and it takes a frame rate. And we're just gonna throw that FPS variable within the tick method. Now this, it'll make it where this loop only goes 60 times per second. Right now we don't have anything in our game, so it doesn't show anything, but it is running at 60 FPS. Uh, so I think that's all for part one. So we got the display showing, uh, we got the main loop kind of running. There's a lot more stuff we're going to add in this main loop later on. But just know we have our main loop and it is running at 60 FPS and our window doesn't crash when we launch it. So in the next video, what we'll probably do is um, I'll show you. We'll probably make our player class, which will be our ship that's on the screen. We'll get started with him, and hopefully we can have him on the screen by the end of the video. But he's he might take a little uh, one or two videos to make. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.